Oh god, how, how do we start? These are gonna go on blank. This week we're heading to the hallowed grounds of Thornbridge Manor to sample Jaipur Indian Pale Ale. But first, the hot topic. Okay, so this week, boys, uh, for our hot topic is I've got some things I think we should be trying now that we're in lockdown. Maybe we've got a little bit more time on our hands. We can probably get a little bit more experimental with our beer tastes. What do you think? So, what, so I'm not entirely sure. Is this beer related? Like, what, <laughs> what are you offering? I'm hoping that this, this isn't some weird proposition by Drabble. Yeah, so beers, um, new new beers to try in lockdown. I'm, I'm going to name a few, and I want you to give me if if, if you think they're a good idea. Okay, so so we're going to start off pretty 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 chilled, I think. So, do you guys all know the cereal Lucky Charms? Yes, it's a really sugary American cereal, isn't it? Yeah, full of full of, full of marshmallows and sugary stuff like that. So there, there there's Lucky Charms beer. Ooh. Okay. It's, um, under uh, under Lucky Charms beer, a Saturday morning IPA. Okay. All I'm saying is, I feel like you have to have this before breakfast. No, this is your breakfast. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Like we talked about like roast dinner in a can, haven't we before? Yeah, breakfast in a can. There we go. Breakfast in a can. We can pretty much turn. We we can have a liquid diet. My my biggest issue with this idea of it's an alcoholic drink for first and foremost breakfast. But it's a breakfast cereal for children. I know adults love cereal as well, but like they're just basically saying it's an alcoholic drink, but it's a, ch- a children's yeah. cereal. I don't know. That seems a bit weird to me. This is nostalgia through and through. This is like this is trying to get you to remember when you were a kid and used to drink alcohol in the morning. Okay. I, okay. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna throw another one out there. Okay. Whale testicle beer. Uh, you've made me sip on, you've made me choke on my beer with that one. What? Whale testicle beer. How big are whale testicles? Th- is that your first question? Really? That's your first question is how big are whales testicles? Well, I'm just trying to think how do you make a how do you make a beer out of whale testicles? Well, I'm not 100% sure, but you know, you know what makes it even better is um so the pure so it's made with the finest resources of pure Icelandic water. Okay, and whale's testicle, but listen to this added bit, smoked in sheep dung. Oh, this is making my stomach chin. The sheep, the sheep poo adds a smoke to the beer. But why? And the brewer says it uses one massive ball per batch. Do they just dink the ball in? <laughs> is, I'm just imagining someone like just dinking like a ball into like a big vat of water or something. I think we need to move past this. I can't, like, I can't wrap my head around this, and I don't know if I want to dig any deeper. I feel like I've, we've talked far too much about whale's testicles for a lifetime. So maybe, may, maybe this is more up your street, a super spicy beer. Okay. It's from, it's called the Ghost Faced Killer. Oh, my word. So I think the Ghost Faced Killer is a, is a chilli, isn't it? Yeah, so, so it's thanks to six chilli peppers used in brewing. That just might blow your head off, which sounds awful. So it's got, yeah, it's got like the ghost, it's the ghost pepper, isn't it? Ghost pepper. That's all I was thinking of, yeah. So I'm just thinking that why would you want a beverage that you can't really taste is my first thought. Because surely if it's that spicy, all you're feeling is the burn, right? Uh, I think I think a lot of it is just a challenge, isn't it? You have all those food challenges. Why not a beer challenge? Okay, then. All right. One more. I'm going to read one more, Okay. So we so we've gone from the shit we've gone from the whale's testicle. You can also get a bull testicle beer. It start so it started an April Fool's joke. Where did you find this list? It's a great. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. So it start that that started off as an April Fool's joke, but picked up so but it picked up so much attention they decided to turn it into an actual beer. It's a Rocky Mountain oyster stout. Kudos to people thinking up these ingenious <laughs> beer ideas and innovations, but I feel like there's some proper beer mad scientist work going on here, and <laughs> they need to pull themselves back a little bit. All right, we'll, we will leave it there. It, what's worrying is that makes it sound like there's a lot more in this list. Oh, there were, yeah. I'll stop. And now for some pursuit of hoppiness. So this week, we're talking about Thornbridge Brewery, and specifically we're going to talk about their Jaipur Indian Pale Ale, and as we know, Jaipur being the largest 
capital city of Rajasthan, the state in India. So they've quite literally gone, right, what's an in we're an Indian pale ale, let's just pick a, a city or a place in India and we'll call it that. So that's quite interesting in itself, but it actually comes from Bakewell in Derbyshire. Bakewell being very famous for, Simo? Bakewell tarts, of course. There you go. And for those, n those not uh, familiar with a Bakewell tart, what is in a Bakewell tart? Um, marzipan, jam, and cake. Cake's a very generic term. Cake's not an ingredient. <laughs> Cake's not an ingredient. Well, there's a cherry on top and I like it. Okay. So, it's marzipan. Cake. <laughs> cake. <laughs> it's basically a, a, yeah, a pastry, marzipan, jam, and a cherry. There you go. That's yeah. a Bakewell tart. Done. The brewery itself uh, in Thornbridge only actually started in 2005, but Thornbridge itself has been around a lot longer, isn't that right, Rich? Yeah, so Thornbridge Hall has been around since the 1800s and has a variety of different roles. It was involved in certain things in World War II and has been taken over by various families throughout the time. And it's had, a, if you want to do, if there, there is an extensive history behind it. I'm not going to rattle it off because this isn't a history lesson. We're learning all about the beer. But if you want to go and have a Google and take a look, it's well worth it. So the modern era of, of Thornbridge Brewing Company uh, started out, as we said, in 2005. Started out by two two founders, a guy called Jim Harrison and Simon Webster. And it seems like they, I don't know what their affiliation with Thornbridge actually is. I think they own the kind of the, the lands or part of it. And they recruited, as they say, two young brewers to brew on a second-hand 10-barrel kit in the grounds of Thornbridge Hall. So it feels like these owners of Thornbridge Brewing basically just bought in people who know about brewing because they had the land, they had the buildings, and they just needed a source of income. So they thought, let's build a brewery on it. Um, yeah, and, and to add to that, I mean, you, you just talked about the fact that they had Ten Barrel Brewery in 2005. They actually, within four years, so September 2009, uh, opened a state, a new state-of-the-art 30 Barrel Brewery. Um, and the idea is that the old one is now used. So the original Hall Brewery uh, is now used to develop new seasonal and speciality beers, whilst the 30 Barrel Brewery allows for the creation of their mainstay beers. So just to, just a quick add on to that as well. I've just looking at their what they were doing for 2020 and beyond. So I think they're still looking to expand. So they have their own canning line as well, um, as well as a brand new visitor centre and develop for 2021 with like a retail area. And like they're trying to turn it into a whole venue sort of thing. So they're looking to input like a bar offering food. So you know how Brew Dog have done, Northern Monk have done. They've turned their breweries into whole experiences to go along and see and. By the looks of it, you can rent um, Thornbridge Hall out to do to do events and stuff like that. So I'm assuming they're looking at expanding on that market as well, which is which seems to be very popular amongst these 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 new breweries in in the past decade or so. It's interesting that though, because they're, they're they're obviously I would we would class them as a craft beer because they started out in 2005, you know, kind of then that kind of smaller startings and they're really starting to gain momentum now. But it doesn't really have the same story that a lot of the craft beers that we know that are quite mainstream becoming more mainstream now. You know, where it's like you know some people who are just wanted to work out the back of a kitchen, you know, work in their mum's basement, you know, drive it around in a car to do the first deliveries. This seems like it's had proper monetary investment and an established building from day one. You know, it's like they've had some money, a capital behind it to start this beer, this brewery up. I was just going to say that the fact that it feels like it's got more planning involved in its development rather than kind of people interested in beer having a go and seeing what happens. As you've said, it seems like somebody's got, we've got an idea, we need to get people involved, let's make this structured and organised. It, it doesn't feel like a rags to riches story that maybe you've got from Northern Monk where they were brewing in their mum's, was it their basement, their mum's basement sort of thing and deliver it into the back of a car. It feels like there's been an investment thrown into it and they've managed to expand so much in what is it, 10 years they've been brewing for? I believe it's about 10 years. They seem well, to 15, have... 15 years now it will be. 15 years that's that that's a big expansion in that time and they've and they, they seem to be doing very well for themselves it's almost like you know they're, they're re redefining for, well we kind of a rethink of what craft is you know this it's very crafted 
this this beer in this yeah. brewery you know it's very considered it's uh you know they've thought a lot about it i mean if we're looking at the design of them as well you know their branding you know it's it's inspired by the peak district because that's where darbush is in you know but they've got you know elements that's been drawn out from the manor itself you know the detailing around the fireplaces i believe they've drawn inspiration from and you know there's a company called thirst which is based up in glasgow which it did the design for them and you know they talk all about it on their website you know this case study of it that you know they were just really trying to create heritage you know trying to help this heritage brand but it's not a heritage brand it only started in 2005 it's a very new brand that's just been born out of an old setting so you know they they have been able to kind of take a new look on the on the craft industry because they have been very crafted in what they're doing and the detailing i mean it's fascinating the design but it does look really like old-fashioned they've drawn on a lot of the old kind of inspiration of what was in the building from that you know from the manor itself but in a very kind of contemporary way i mean the color colors themselves across their range are very distinctive you know you'd be able to recognize very easily which one's their jaipur beer you know which one's their green beer which one's their lord, lord mercy's but beer you know it's got a lot of you know different colors that are, are, are talking about you know their lucas hell's lager i mean again they're talking about a hell's lager that again that could be to do with the hops that they're using I was, well, I was, I was, I was going to say it was. You, we, we talk about the branding and how distinctive it is. I've, I've never purchased Jaipur. I've never heard of it until we decided to do it for the podcast this week. Um, so when going out to try and source it, sort of thing, it was, it was really easy to find. It wasn't, it wasn't a hard look. Sometimes we name some ales and beers that we've had to, you've had to look, you've had to go to various stores, sort of thing. First store I went into, there it was, and it wasn't hard to come by, which I think gives you kudos to their, kudos to their branding and the way they, the way they show themselves. Also, with regards to, I'd seen the orange box. So when I was going through the supermarket, I'd seen this orange kind of box. And I'm thinking, who is that? I've never heard of it, never seen it before. And it's only until today, uh, like a few days ago, when I had to buy this beer, that I realized that it was Jaipur and it was Thornbridge. I had never heard of this company. And the fact that, I knew, I knew there was something different on the stat, on the, on the, um, in, not in the stands, on the shelves, because I could see it was a bright orange box and it does, the Jaipur for me definitely stands out. I've never seen any of the others. I've only actually seen Jaipur be advertised. Um, yeah, I think they've done a lot of, uh, you know, Jaipur for me anyway has, has, is the one that I got introduced to this brewery for because it's just arrived in, in supermarkets. You know, it's just arrived that I, in the last couple of months, and so okay. I picked it up. I actually saw it, I actually saw it for the very first time a few, about a month ago when it was Diwali, um, you know, the Indian festival, and they were, had a whole stand in Sainsbury's to show, oh, here's, you know, to celebrate Diwali, here are your Indian dishes, you know, here's the English curry, Indian yeah. curry that you can have, you know, here's a cobra, you know, here's a, you know, and they were really kind of like, hey, English people, it's Diwali coming up, why don't you buy a takeaway, basically. And Jaipur was there. And I thought, that's interesting because it's not from India. It's not even saying it's from India. It's just an Indian pale ale that's called itself Jaipur. So is it a bit cultural appropriation, in my opinion, to kind of just say we're nothing to do with India, but it's an Indian pale ale and we're just going to call it Jaipur? It seems a bit, I don't know, ill-conceived. I mean, you could say the same, though, with regards to a cobra, which was it's a British-made it's British made, but it's selling itself as an Indian beer, as in, in terms of Cobra is designed to say you're having it with an Indian. It's, it's stereotypically linked to that fact. And Jaipur, I feel like if you look at the design of it as well, it reminds me of the Asian lagers. Like it reminds me of like a singer bottle. Like, well, I'm not sure if the can is the same, but I've got a bottle here and I feel like it does remind me of that kind of singer style. Like it looks really regal. It looks really kind of elite almost. So it's interesting how they describe this Jaipur beer. It says Jaipur comes with over 100 worldwide awards. This iconic American style IPA has a complexity of flavor created by a six dimensional hop experience. Someone's had a fantastic time there. What do you, what do you reckon a six dimensional hop experience is? It sounds like, it sounds like one of those virtual reality rides you'd get at Alton Towers. <laughs> Come on down to the six-dimensional hop experience. Yeah, it sounds like I would get motion sickness and just wouldn't have a good time. Six dimensions. I can just about deal with my own. Do they mean six six dimensions are six? I, I think they're just 
Dimension is really throwing me off, with as, as it is with you guys. But they're basically just saying they've got six different hops in this beer. They've got a Chinook, a Centennial, an Antanum, a Simcoe, a Columbus, and a Cascade hop. So that is six hops. Yeah. But does it need six hops? They didn't need to call it Dimensional. That's no, all I'm saying as well. <laughs> it feels like they're just trying to embrace the future too soon. It's like you're going to a 3D movie and they actually throw water over you. Yeah, yeah it's about the experience, guys. Come on. I think they're trying to make. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think that it feels like they're trying to make it something more than it needs to be. They're they're, they're throwing too much at it. Almost overcrafted. Overcrafted. They're trying to create this whole whole story, which I, I don't think it needs. But I think that's because they don't have, they're not, a, you know, they're a new brewer, but they're also not a new brewer that's doing it because it's just all about the beer. You know, it's yeah. not like a Beaver Town, Logan Paul, you know, it, it story or a brew dog story where they're like, we just really believe that this industry needs to be, needs disruption. You know, this is a company that's seen an opportunity and they've created a range of beers. I mean, linking back to the you saying seizing an opportunity, something that I read, which I found really interesting, was that between 2009 and now, so what's that, 11 years, they are in 35 countries worldwide and they've just added Brazil um, to their trading. So they are expanding very quickly and they're making sure that they are throwing themselves about a little bit, which is quite interesting for a craft brewing company that they have expanded so quickly. Yeah, I think it's really, it's down to the fact of how they are so polished and they're marketable outside of the, you know, they've done a really good job of this. Um, you know, I've just noticed that they're going through their website that they've got a whole range of different beers. Obviously, we've talked about their kind of core range, but you know, they've also got one that's called the Shelby, which is the official beer of the um, TV series, the Peaky Blinders TV series. No way! Yeah. So cool. they've obviously done enough with the kind of the, the rights and the people who have gone out to market this beer or this brewery to say, look, we need to do collaborations with everything in between. Um, so I think it's, I think they're doing a, a really good job and that shows in their numbers that they are in so many different countries. So let's talk about the liquid itself. What are we, what's our first impressions of this American inspired IPA, Indian pale ale? Um, I was, um, taken back by the, the first taste. Um, I kind of don't know what to make of it. Um, the, it. It does feel like it hits you very quickly. I don't feel like it gives you time to, in, like it's not a slow burn like ones we've had before. So I remember like the Northern Monk, which was kind of a slow kind of, we felt that it was quite like a slow burn. I feel like this really packs a punch quite quickly. I've I've gone with that. It's, it's fine. It It's not, horrific it's not horrible but i am enjoying the taste it's got it's, it's very bitter it's got a very bitter initial taste and aftertaste the bitterness continues you get a lot with some beers and stuff where you get that initial bitter taste and then it kind of mellows out a little bit this is a continuing bitter taste the whole way through and i put that down to the sixth dimension of hops <laughs> <laughs> So I would say, I would say that actually for me, I get the, that initial taste is, you know, it, it's what you expect from a, a, a kind of a newer IPA. It's got like a, a different twang to it. That bitterness definitely comes through, but I got the bitter a bit later on. Okay. Um, you know, I definitely got that kind of quite soft impression when I first drank oh, really? it. It is very citrusy. It's drying my mouth out straight away. You know, Completely not agree. as yeah, it's, it's, it's that classic of, but I just don't think it's as smooth as they're describing that it should be. You know, they say that this lemon zest is quaffable. Now, you know, I would say that actually this is a, a can that I'm drinking now and I'm, I've got halfway through the can and it is different to the first couple of sips, but it's, it's still not a smooth IPA. I would say for me, I've gone, I'm now two thirds of the way through my bottle. I am now reading and realizing it's 5.1%. No, it's 5.9%. Sorry, that's it. Sorry, 5.9%. And I am, and, and I'm very much aware that it is 5.9. And I'm actually feeling kind of full, like as in it feels quite heavy to me. Uh, do you agree? Well, I don't think that the ABV value means that it's a, a heavier beer. 
that that's not what it means. Alcohol content doesn't mean that. No, but as in, I feel like I'm, I'm aware, like when I drink this, I'm aware that it tastes strong, if that makes sense. So I feel like it tastes like it's a strong alcohol content to it. I think that's also, that's the classic of a, a craft IPA. You know, mm. that is, it is, it's, as we've talked before, it's not a mellow drink. It's a, it's something that can be, it's not like a session ale, which can still also be an IPA, an Indian pale ale, but it, you know, this is their standalone IPA. And so it is hitting something in that category where you would like, I drink IPAs. I like this IPA. And I think if you're an IPA fan, this is a good one to add to the collection because it's that little bit different. Would you, would you say if you were giving someone, an IPA for the first time, would you think that this is a good starting point? Was this somewhere where you would venture to? No, this is this is something you've got to try maybe a bit afterwards. You've had some maybe mellower IPAs, something a little bit more subtle, something a little bit more easier to drink sort of thing. This, is, this isn't something I would have more than one of on a regular basis. It's... I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued to try the rest of their brand. I definitely want to try different mix because, because it's not bad. It's not a bad IPA, but it's, it's definitely something I want to explore and see what else, what else they've got to offer. I feel though there could, there could be some interesting, interesting beer to try. Well, you're in luck there, Rich, because they have a wide selection of, of kind of core products. Oh, go on, hit me. One that I'm really interested in to try is their Tupelo, which okay. is a hazy pale ale. Ooh. Which oh, is quite interesting. Okay. Interesting sounding. They have a, a vicious circle, which is a seven point four percent white Burgundy barrel aged golden ale in a collaboration with Burning Sky Beer. Okay. There is so many words in, in what you've just said in that explanation. That is crazy. Well, I've just I've just got I've got to quickly show you guys something, but um, just everyone look at their screen if you can see it. What's that? Don't know. That's that's a vicious circle. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> oh, god. <laughs> oh, that was awful. That was such a dad joke. So, if, for all the listeners out there, he was holding his hand up in a circle like shape, and then he made a growling noise as you heard. Uh, <laughs> that, that was outrageous. So that was that so bad. So awful. Um. So, Joe, do you want to let us know their numbers? Yeah. So on Twitter, they have fifty-one point four k followers. Wow. On Instagram, they have 38.2k followers. That's, that's, that's a big following. Yeah, they've invested well. And on, I mean, on, on YouTube, they only have 265 subscribers. YouTube is obviously a second thing to them, but they're very regularly po uh, posting on the likes of, of, uh, of YouTube, which is great to see. Um, on Twitter, I mean, they've got over almost 19k tweets that they've put oh, out wow. there. Oh, really? So they are very active. Yeah. Very active. So I'd say to kind of sum up uh, Thornbridge, Thornbridge's Jaipur, as an IPA, it's uh, it's different, I would say. it's But it hits a lot of the same kind of cues that you'll be used to if you if you like your IPAs. But there's nothing dramatically... It is award-winning, so it obviously is, is hitting the categories for a lot of people um, and a lot of the judges. But for us, I, I feel like it. there are so many great IPAs out there, especially in this craft beer area and environment. And for me, Thornbridge, I'm just hard to get my head around whether they fit into more of an established, polished or crafted brewery, or if they are actually considered to be a, a craft brewer. And I'll be really interested to see if any of our viewers um, like your view on Jaipur compared to other IPAs. I think it'd be really interesting to hear if you think that this kind of stands amongst the greats etc yeah please give us your comments in the in the descriptions on instagram twitter or, or, or email us at i'll try that podcast at gmail.com and that's all we have time for from this week's episode of the i'll try that podcast and so from me joe rich and simo goodbye and don't forget to follow us on instagram twitter and watch us on youtube goodbye now always drink responsibly and if you or anyone else needs some help Go to drinkaware.co.uk for more information.